well. I've been expecting you to go to the video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the clean room stance. If we're in the clean room, we don't want our hands to be like this. We don't want our arms and hands to go down to our sides. We should stand in a way that's comfortable. Or we should hold our hands up like this, or down like that. So we're not directly touching our suit, and we're not directly touching any other kind of surface. After we stood like this, or like that, and we're required to go into a filling machine or grade A device, what do we need to do? We need to spray our hands and follow the good hand sanitization technique shown on other videos in this series. We also need to be careful with the way that we move. Again, we've seen in other videos, the faster we move in clean rooms, then the more particulates we are releasing. So when we're walking in clean rooms, it's slow, deliberate movements, particularly in filling rooms. Grade C or D can move a bit faster, steady pace. But we know in grade B that every time we move we're creating billows of air, air turbulence, and so on. So we're trying to minimise that as best we can. So it's the slow movements. We do not, we do not, we do not. Do that kind of fast movement. We need to save that for watching football or at the discotheque. So, avoid touching yourself or other people, and avoid touching human contact sites unless you really have to. And when you do, then either consider glove chain or glove sanitization. And these will mean pens, keyboards, keypads, door handles, chairs. Telephones, door handles, paperwork, desks, plug, switches, any potentially unclean equipment, um, any containers of any disinfectant. If you do make contact, always sanitize your gloves. Same thing happens with gloves. So we don't want to be a mug when we touch the wrong thing. So any time we think we touch a surface or touch part of our body, or touch something that we shouldn't, especially if we're about to go and intervene into grade A, we need to practice effective hand sanitization. Quite right. We should always have the minimum numbers of people in the clean room that are absolutely necessary. It's further good practice to make sure our gowns are changed if damaged or wet. It's also good practice to make sure our gowns are changed if we've worn them for long durations. Long duration is up to four hours or more. It's also important to make sure our, our gowns are not damaged. It's also important to note that if we walk quickly, as I have said, this can create particulates. Also, it can disrupt the airflow. It's also important that we're not spraying disinfectant near components, raw materials, or environmental monitoring equipment like particle counters, because we're going to get uh, false particle results, which can put the release of batch at risk, or at least cause a significant delay. We have to assume that all surfaces are potentially contaminated. So if we do feel we made contact with a surface at working height, then we do need to sanitize our gloves afterwards. And we always have to consider the floor to be a dirty area and that's because particulates will settle out onto the floor so never ever pick up anything up from the floor during a aseptic processing activity you have to get another item and we have to wait till the end of the shift the end of the filling process to pick up the item also when it comes to touching you need to be very careful you're not touching the head covering or ever touching anything to do 
with the mask. If we ever really need to, let's go and change. Clean rooms are not only called clean rooms because of the particular concentration in the air, we also need to apply that in the literal sense. So clean rooms should be clean and uncluttered areas. All items entering clean rooms must be able to be effectively sanitised. We should always avoid taking items into the clean room which might generate high levels of particulates. This is because we're trying to avoid cross-contamination. A filling room must never be used for a shortcut and this includes a processing corridor where freeze dryers are in use. When we ever have to open an autoclave bag, then we must always be conscious that the opening of the bag will generate particulates. So we need to be very careful when we do it, and we always need to give sufficient time for the area to rest for two to three minutes after an autoclave bag has been opened. And this applies to any other kind of wrapping of sterilised components.